Our next speaker is Zachary Shahan. And Zach is the director and editor of cleantechnica.com, the number one most visited clean tech focused website on the internet. He's also the founder of Solar Love, EV Obsession, and Bikeosity. He's one of the world's leading communicators on solar energy, electric vehicles, wind energy, energy efficiency, and bicycle transportation issues. Zach currently lives in Poland, but he's originally from Sarasota, Florida. So Zach, over to you. Thank you. My, the focus of my presentation today is the future is now. Uh, this is the price drop of solar from 1977 to 2013. For years, the idea was solar was going to be competitive soon. Soon, solar was going to be as cheap as other sources. The future is now. Solar is competitive now. Uh, this is another interesting graph showing the price drop of solar relative to the price of coal, natural gas, oil. The, the title is wonderful. Welcome to the Terror Dome. This comes from an, a, a Bernstein analysis report. This is disruptive technology. The future is now because solar has crossed the important barriers. Now, when you think of how long it takes a coal or nuclear power plant to, to be developed, six to eight years, the projected cost at that time, solar takes under a year to develop. So the projected cost of solar in 2020 is already far cheaper than nuclear or coal. Actually, that low cost of seven cents a kilowatt hour is higher than what we've already hit. We hit six cents, under six cents in Dubai last year. And we've hit similar prices in the US, in Brazil, in India, uh, seven, eight, nine cents. So already this, this is out of date. <laughs> this is from 2013. Solar is competitive. Solar is cheaper than natural gas. It's cheaper in a lot of places. It's cheaper than nuclear. It's cheaper than coal. Look at the red line here. That's the projected cost of solar in 2017, six cents a kilowatt hour. Again, we hit that in Dubai last year. We've hit eight cents in Arizona. We've hit eight, nine, 10 cents in Brazil, in, in India. If you look at the wind chart, wind was the most competitive price, uh, new, new source of electricity. But that's wholesale. Think about retail electricity. The blue circles on the top are retail electricity prices in these countries. The blue diamonds are rooftop solar. Rooftop solar is already cheaper than retail electricity in countries and states all over the world. Uh, so the result is that we're trans transforming, we're transitioning to renewable energy. In the, the US last year, wind and solar together uh, accounted for more than half of US new electricity capacity. We're seeing similar around the world. We've seen similar in 2013. This year so far, 84%, 84%. It takes a long time to transition power plants, to transition the electricity sector, but it is happening. This is the growth of solar in the US. It's exponential. This is disruptive technology. The future is now. It's happening now. It's growing fast. It's similar with wind, very similar chart with wind, very similar if you look globally. This is the US. Uh, Bloomberg New Energy Finance had a great chart, a great point. In 2013, clean power passed fossil fuel for new electricity capacity worldwide, globally, and it's never going to go back. The projected increase in clean power is just rising. The protect, projected uh, future of fossil fuels is falling. Transitioning a little bit, this is about energy potential. The yellow circle is solar energy potential every year, every year. On the right, you have total known reserves for fossil fuels and nuclear. Solar energy has the potential to power the world, theoretically. That's not going to happen. Like Mark said, it's about a, a mixture. But uh, you know, that's generation, that's electricity generation. Transportation is another huge pie of fighting global warming and air pollution. We can transition to electric vehicles. I, I, am, I am convinced, even more convinced than that, we're trans, than that we're transitioning to renewable energy, I'm convinced we're transitioning to electric vehicles. And there's a few reasons, not about the environment. The two big benefits of electric vehicles are that they're fun as, they're very fun. Uh, <laughs> You step, you step on the pedal in an electric vehicle, you have instant torque, you have instant power. This is so much fun that people who own electric vehicles for years still get what they call an EV smile when they drive them. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, the second big benefit is it's, they're more convenient. Despite the huge failure in the media focusing on uh, charging solution, situation for EVs, you charge at home. You get home, you plug in, it takes you a few seconds, you go inside, you hang out with your family, you chill out. It's so much more convenient. People who have to rent a gasoline car or go back to gasoline, there are a few that have, 
they really regret it because it's much more convenient. And similarly, we're seeing exponential growth in the electric vehicle market globally. And this is, I'm convinced, this is going to transition very fast. And you think about te technology transitions, they happen very fast. When this, when this was a, the best cell phone you could find, when this was the best cell phone on the market, how many of you thought you would have a cell phone in five to 10 years? I sure as hell didn't. Uh, but it happened very fast because once the technology is ripe, once it's better and cost competitive, the transition happens like that. And we're gonna see it. When, when, when this was the top of the line computer, how many of you thought you would have a tablet or a smartphone in your pocket that would be several times more powerful, several able to do many, 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 many more things? You didn't, but when the technology is ripe, it, it takes over the market. You don't have to force it the market will respond. And we're gonna see that with solar and with electric vehicles and with wind. Now, you know, the pollution problem. Who wants to visit Paris on a day like this? This does not help Paris's tourism industry. This, who wants to live in a city like this? The costs of this pollution are tremendous. Uh, a study led by the director of, medical, of Harvard Medical School found that burning coal in the United States costs us about $500 billion a year in extra health care and health and early death and environmental costs. This is the price of coal not factored in earlier in that chart. This is a tremendous, tremendous failure, and we're going to fix it. If, another factor with fossil fuels, we have to import them often. One billion euros a day is the price of imported oil in Europe. One billion euros a day. We're, they're sending money to other countries. Why? It's, it's not going to last for long once we realize the benefits of electric cars. So, you know, you have, you have cheaper electricity that's clean, right on your rooftop, saves you money. You have electric cars that are much better driving experience, much better product for consumers, much more convenient, much more fun. And you can drive on sunlight. You can drive on sunshine. That's the future, and the future is now.